someone just answer here? This is going to be quite a trip to keep them here. Excuse me. Yes. Marion? Uncle Preston! <laughs> well, I thought it was you. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was busy with, uh... Well, never mind. Uh, when did you ever get into town? Uh, two hours ago. I see. I, in fact, I was just about to call your father. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, Courtney didn't tell me you were coming. That's because Courtney didn't know. And if you should see her, I would appreciate it if you didn't say anything. Oh, oh, I won't. I won't do that. Well, I, I can see you are anxious to leave. Yeah, I'm sorry, Uncle Preston. Goodness, I don't mean to be rude, well, that's but all I... right. That's all right. I'm I understand. You go, you go on. I'll be in town for a while, and perhaps okay. we can have a long talk. Fine, thank you. And I'll explain all of this to you later. Bye now. Bye-bye. What is it? Oh, my, what a charming way to answer your phone, Charles. Preston? Yes. But try not to sound so enthusiastic. Well, your family and your associates certainly have been finding my place very sociable these days. Oh, good, good. Then allow me to pay you a visit also. I've just arrived in town. <clears throat> uh, say, about an hour then? Uh, yes, all right. Uh, that's fine. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be here most of the afternoon. Fine. I'll see you later. Now, do you know how... Ready, Mr. Carpenter? What? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Lucas. Thank you. Uh, I hope that wasn't bad news just now. Probably, sir. probably. My dear brother uh, Preston is going to honor me with a visit. Oh? He wouldn't come out of his way to come see me unless I have something he wants. Well, maybe this time it'll be different. Maybe this time he'll give you something. Mm -mm. If he's going to give me anything, there'll be one giant string attached to it. You can bank on it. I wish I'd been born an only child. Okay. Thank you very much. Miss. Excuse me, I'm busy. Hello. Hello. Well, Mary. Oh, Mason, well, this you... is the same table. I believe the head waiter asked me to bring this to. Uh, well, actually, we were just leaving. But, uh... Oh, hello. Since when do you work here? Well, this is my first day. In fact, you're my first customers. Oh, Dan Straw's berry cheesecake. Oh, you know about this, huh? It is just fantastic. How would you like some? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I really shouldn't. <laughs> No, why not? No, you're not going to tell me someone who looks as good as you. You just can't possibly tell me that you're watching your weight, are you? Oh, well, if I don't, no one else will. <laughs> now, Mr. Myers, you're not going to let her get away with a statement like that, are you? I mean, after all, I've noticed the two of you and how you've been together. You just can't seem to keep your eyes on her. Why here? I beg your pardon? Why did you pick here to work? Well, it is a long story, and I'm certain you wouldn't be interested. I'm not trying me. Well, maybe over this piece of cheesecake, I will tell you. Uh, not for me, Julia. Do you, do you... Um, no, I'd love to. Oh, like... nonsense. Come on, Miriam's right. You don't have anything to worry about. Okay, well, that's encouraged, man. That's sure. for me. Oh, wonderful. There wonderful. You go. Thank you. So, tell me about your new job here. 
Oh, but I need to be getting back now. Well, you can spare me a few minutes. I mean, we haven't even really talked since uh, Eric's custody hearing, right? And now that we're not on opposite sides, I'm really not such a bad guy. <laughs> yes, well, I guess you, of all people, know how important it is for me to be employed. And, um, well, this opportunity just presented itself, and um, I felt it was something that I should definitely do. But I need to be leaving now. It's very important. Okay? Uh. <laughs> Excuse me, well, I, just, I, I just saw those people at dessert. Would you make certain you put it on the? Well, pill? you have no right to take anything I, off the I'm sorry, but it's not very nice to quibble in front of the customers. Would you just please mind and make it a better business? Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Well, don't bother to say hello. <laughs> Hi, I didn't know you are home. Yeah, surprise. So are you, finally. Oh, is this some vague reference to last night? It is. Shall I be more specific? No. Well, I got some studying to do, so, uh... How about a little, uh, explaining first? Explaining? You mean, like, why was I so late, or how did it go? Both. But seeing as how I'll get an argument from you on the first one, I'll settle for the second. Okay, in that case, I'll give you a few minutes. Shall wow. we sit down? How very thoughtful of you. Yeah. So, uh... What time did you finally get in? Ah, uh, 2.30. I take it that means you and Courtney enjoyed yourselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very much. I'm glad. Of course, the night wasn't without its complications, but uh, everybody had a good time. At least by two people in particular. Yeah, yeah. Good. I like her, Peter. I mean, I'm not saying that I'd like to look down and see your grandmother's ring on her finger, but I do like hey, her. Hey, will you give me a break, please? This isn't anything like Vicky. I didn't think Vicky was anything like Vicky until I realized you wanted to marry her. Am I going to have to continually listen to this? No. That wasn't fair of me. I'm sorry. Got you nervous. <laughs> yeah, a little. Yeah. A little nervous myself. You don't mean... No, I mean that this whole thing with Vicky taught me a lot. Please, no, I told you so. It's okay. For me? Never. Are you hungry? Depends. What do you got to offer me? Whatever your hot little hands can make. I gotta oh, run yeah? out and do some errands. Just remember to clean up after yourself. Hey, don't I always? Is that a serious question? No. Good. <laughs> Where's my... There it is. Thanks. Oh, and if you remember, uh, you might move the screens. I'd like to get my car into the garage sometime before next April. Oh. That means okay. do it before you get back, right? Hey, you're quick, kid. Oh. Well, real quick. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Excuse me, the woman that was with me, the blonde. Oh, yes, uh, she left. And with my blessing. Excuse me. Come right on, with Lori, let's get this over with. Where is he? Oh, no. What? What are you trying to pull? Look, she was here. She was with him. They were laughing. They were holding hands. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm sure they were. Listen, take me back to the hotel. I don't want to be embarrassed by having Dan see me. Dan, wait. There she is. He gets it. Well, the uh, waiter will be back, I'm sure, and then we can go. Oh, I don't think that cheesecake was such a good idea. Now you'll have to roll me out of here. <laughs> I'll have to spend an extra hour or so at the gym paying for it. Uh, well, you know, I can uh, think of a better way to burn off calories. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Preston. Oh. Well, should I see you again, Charles? Yes, yes. Uh, would you like a drink? No, thank you. Uh, if you don't mind, I think I will. Not at all. Well, must be something terribly important that uh, brings you all the way down here. Yes, so why waste time with unnecessary enforced pleasantries? As we never have before. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I have the feeling this has something to do with Courtney. Yes, it does. You've got the floor. Well, I'm very unhappy with her presence here in Kingsley. 
She's deliberately chosen the college to place as much distance as possible between herself and certain, certain responsibilities. Responsibilities? Don't you actually mean people, such as Vaughn Sumner? <laughs> Continue. You're very well informed. I told you once before today, Preston, your associates find my place very sociable at this time. Ah, good, good. Well, it is very important for Courtney's sake that she feels that she's being independent. However, it's more important that I have knowledge of what she is doing and who she is doing it with. Mm -hmm. And her Uncle Charles. Yes. Isn't it customary in situations like this to hire a private investigator? Well, yes, if that's all that is needed. You see, Charles, I, I would like her to move in here with you. Yes. That's what Vaughn told me last night. This is really fascinating, Preston. Huh? You're asking me to raise your daughter. Back in Chicago a few years ago, I didn't enjoy that kind of confidence from you. In fact, you told me that I was incompetent and then forced me out of the shipbuilding company. Is that what you really believe happened? The facts speak for themselves. So do the facts that you have conveniently omitted. Oh, incidentally, I'm not asking you to raise my daughter. I am asking in Courtney's behalf for your hospitality. No, what you're really asking me to do is intimidate Courtney so that there won't be any more scenes such as the one I witnessed between her and Vaughn last night. No, thank you, Preston. I simply have no desire at all to involve myself in your petty family problems, and I'm amazed that you think I would be. No, Charles, I never thought that you would be unless the price was right, and I think you'll find that it is. Nancy, I'm sorry. Look, go over to him. Tell him the game's over. No. Nancy, they are probably laughing at you right now. I don't care. You've been set up. Do something about it. Lori, that man made me love him. That doesn't just go away in a minute. Well, then I'm going to do something about it. No. That's my responsibility. Then take it. Too many people are going to lose out if you don't. Lori, just take me home. Nancy, please. Lori, please don't make me beg. I don't have enough money for a cab. I just, I just want to go home. Then please don't make me beg. I didn't bring you here to hurt you, Nancy. I brought you here so that you would know the truth. Look, Lori, I understand. But not now, not here. I just want to go home. You want to fight out the malpractice suit in court, but you've forgiven Nancy. In advance, so to speak. She really doesn't know what she's doing, Doug. Well, that's a pretty incredible feat. You know, I've only had a couple of meetings with her, you know, but they couldn't end quick enough for my taste. Well, maybe there is a God, after all. It certainly borders on the miraculous. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, Lucille? Uh-huh. No, that's only 10 milligrams. Right. Yeah, I'll be there shortly. Uh-huh, thanks. I guess it is a miracle of sorts. You know, Nancy and I have never been on the best of terms, and this law suit really <laughs> hasn't helped matters. Yeah, well, I think that's got to be the understatement of the year. You know, when Nancy said she was marrying Dan Myers, my first impulse was to laugh. I mean, the whole situation's just so obvious. But then I realized she was serious. She was genuinely hurt because we weren't happy for her. And then, Doug, I realized she really loves this guy and she thinks that he loves her. It's kind of hard not to feel sorry for someone when they're that far out of touch with reality. Not really. Oh, come on, now think about it, Doug. I have. I'm being serious here. Now think. She's, she really believes Dan Myers has her best interest at heart. She's relying on him. She's trusting in him. She's putting all her hopes on him. Now, how would you feel if someone set you up like that? No, I don't care who they are. No one deserves that kind of pain. Yeah. What's wrong? Nothing, nothing. So you've forgiven Nancy, huh? Yeah, I'm trying. I wonder if she does it again. 
Or if someone else hurt you in a different way, would you be just as forgiving? I'd try. <laughs> Sorry, but I find all that a little too incredible. Doug, is there something you're not telling me? No. Lori said the last time she talked with you, um, she seems a little concerned about you. I don't know why. Everything's fine. Listen, I've got to get back to my office. Thanks for the lunch. Sure. I'll be in touch. I seriously doubt if there's anything you could offer me that would be worth having Courtney live here. Not even a seat on the board of directors of a shipping line? I thought that would do it. Are you authorized to make such an offer? Not at the moment, no. The seat you would be taking is mine. However, it's a simple matter to put the proper machinery in motion. And uh, then where do you go? That's my business. But the fact that I will is unfortunate, but true. What I'm trying to do now is determine what will happen after I do. Mm -hmm. You realize, of course, I want written proof that this is a genuine offer. You've got my word, and that's all you get. Since when has that been good for anything? Charles, I would have thought that even the hope of returning to power in Chicago would be more than enough compensation. Now, really, Charles, you have taken quite a step down. I'm doing quite well, thank you. Charles, this is pitiful compared to what you used to have, and you know it. A seat on the board of directors of a shipping line, you'd be able to quadruple your personal worth in a very short time, and you know that too. So let's stop playing games. This offer is more generous than you deserved. Yes, I agree that we should not be playing games because I happen to know that your net worth is considerably less than it used to be. <laughs> but Vaughn has prepared the way. Speaking of Vaughn, why don't you fill me in on the uh, Sumner family and tell me exactly how they got control of that company? All right. I think I will have that drink now. It's no secret that I made my share of bad decisions. But when I made it, though, building those tankers was a good one. This country needed that foreign oil. Now, with an oil glut, they're just sitting there useless. It's gotten to the point where I keep the drapes in the office closed, seeing them out there just too painful. I don't understand something. How, how did the Sumner family get interested? Because they recognize a bargain when they see it. They have enough resources to wait it out until the world situation changes. In point of fact, they were the only ones interested. So I didn't have a lot of bargaining power. How does Courtney fit into all this? Well, there's been an understanding now for a few years that eventually she and Vaughn will get married. And Vaughn has made it quite clear that if they don't, family will pull out. Mm -hmm. So you're quite willing to sacrifice your daughter's happiness for your own personal security. <laughs> oh, come on, Charles. Since when have you ever been interested in anybody else's personal happiness? And it's not just my security, it's hers and her mother's. She can't see that, of course. She's too busy turning her back on her social obligations, playing the struggling student. She's putting her whole future in jeopardy. You're leaving out one thing, and very possibly the most important element in this. And that is that Preston Carpenter is going to come out of this the wise and canny businessman he no longer is. Make no mistake about it, my older brother. This is a grandstand stunt of yours to save face. You talk to me about saving face, you pompous idiot. Ever since you left Chicago, that's all I have been doing because of you. It was your bungling that cost us the export-import business and along with it most of the family money. Without my knowledge, you got us involved with organized crime. I spent three years repairing the damage that you did. Your actions have set me on this course. Helping me to keep Courtney in line is the least you can do. You know, there's nothing more pathetic than a non-threatening threat. I'm not threatening anything. Of course you're not. You're in no position to. I am offering you something to consider, something that would prove mutually beneficial. 
The only one that would save face is you. Over the past few years, I at least have redeemed myself in the eyes of the business world. You, my little brother, are still considered as something of a joke. I don't want to hear any more. Please. I, I think I, I need to be alone. I'm sorry. We won't talk about it now. Is there anything I can do for you? No, no, I, I'll be, I'll be fine. I, I, I just need some, some time to think. Okay. Well, I'll, uh, I'll call you later. Please comfort her. <laughs> 